Welcome back. So let's get started building our flow. I've kind of talked about how the flow needs to work and now it's time to uh, put the elements on the canvas and make something magic happen. So we see that I have the auto layout enabled. I'm gonna switch this to the free form. And the reason I'm doing this is um, that I like that the elements show up over here. And I think for me, when I was learning flows, um, I looked at like having the elements over here was was really helpful because I became able to kind of think of this as like a checklist. So I'd say, okay, which element do I need in order to um, do whatever I'm trying to do in the flow builder? And kind of going through the checklist, I'd say, well, no, I don't need to start with the assignment. No, I don't need to, you know, it's like, yes, 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 or no, no, no. And I was able to kind of narrow down on the ones I wanted. I think in terms of layout, the auto layout is better, but for understanding what the elements do and being able to think in a checklist checklist like manner, um, the free form is, is pretty good. So let me ask you a question. Our case has been created. What's the first step that our flow needs to do? And it's going to revolve around the data elements. So I hope what you were thinking is it needs to go um, and somehow look up the primary contact. And that's absolutely right. So when you're building flows, um, that's why doing things in the UI is really helpful because it will give you a clue on like what the first step should be. And you know, even feel free to write it out. Like that's something that developers will do. They call it pseudo code, but you could just write out like steps, like step one, create the case. Step two, go look up the primary contact. Step three, um, enter the contact on the case. And you know, just having those steps there in your mind is how you understand what the flow needs to do. And then that lets you build the elements. And so, um, that's a really you know, useful flow building tip, and I'll just offer that to you in case you find it helpful. So yes, um, we're gonna go find the contact and the element, the data element that we used to do that is a get records. So I'll just drag that to the canvas. And we'll say get primary contact. And the object, of course, will be the contact. And what are their criteria for the contact that we need to find? Well, we know one of them. And that is that the account roles field, which shows up first, equals the primary contact. So that's one really good uh, criteria. The second one is that we don't want to just find any random contact in Salesforce that is a primary contact. We want to make sure that whoever the contact we're looking for is related to the same account that the case is related to. So that's you know pretty important. And the way we'll do that is by pressing add condition and we'll say that our account ID field equals, and here we will use the uh, global variable for the case. So I'll just press record case, and um, you can see that the account is available here. Whenever there's a little arrow next to it, that means that it's um, letting us like look at the fields on the account or the asset or the contact or you know what have you. And so I just want the account ID which will not have an arrow next to it. And you can just click that here. And that's perfect. Um, you know, those are the two main criteria. We need to make sure that the contact we're finding is the primary contact and is also related to the account. Down here, we you know have some interesting selections. Uh, one would be how many records do we store? I'm just gonna select only the first record, but it does pose an interesting question. And that is what happens if there's two primary contacts on the account. And you know, that's something that, um, you know, we would really need to ask the business, um, as a flow builder, we're, we're kind of like a doctor. It's like, we can diagnose and we can diagnose a problem and tell you how we might solve it. But then we need the patient to say, yes, that's what we, we need to do. And in this case, the patient would be the business. Um, but you know, we might ask them, Hey, would there ever be two primary contacts on the account? And Sherry, who is our point of contact would say, um, no, you know, it, it will always be one primary contact. That's the business process. And if there are two primary contacts, then uh, that just means we have bad data. And so you can say, okay, well, I'll just set up the flow for one primary contact. Um, so anyway, with all that said, I'm just going to press done and we'll save this. And then I'm going to drag the start element to the get records and press save. And so that's basically it for the get records. Um, we're going to do something that we didn't do in previous versions, but we're going to debug this right away. 
And so we're just gonna see, you know, right off the bat if this is working. You know, when a case is created, are we able to go find the primary contact? So I'm gonna press the debug button and I'm just gonna click skip the start condition requirements. And the reason I'm doing that is because we don't actually have a case that will be created. I need to select a case and that case that we just created in the UI, which you can see the number up here is 1026, is available right here. So I can select 1026. And so by debugging the flow in this way and skipping the start condition requirements, the flow is going to run as if case 1026 was just created, which is really cool because we already have the case record and all the field values are present. And now we can just say, hey, Flow Builder, you know, go and pretend like this case just got created and do whatever logic you have set up and we'll see what happens. So I'll press run. And we can see that um, we get a completed success message. So that's a good sign. Our single path is highlighted in yellow to indicate to us kind of how the flow ran. With one element, it's very obvious it went to the first path, but I've seen some very, very big flows. So having this uh, yellow highlight is super helpful. And then over on the right, we can see how the interview started and it was just triggered by a debug run. The start condition requirements were skipped. And so we just jumped right to the get records and we can see you know, our get our records in action. And we uh, set it up to find all contact records where the account role equals the primary contact and the account ID equals uh, the account ID of the case. And so this ID right here, you will see uh, corresponds with uh, Dickinson PLC. So um, the, the Dickinson PLC account has an ID in Salesforce, just like um, every other record. And you can see that this ID value here in the URL matches what's in the flow. So it um, ends with K-U-N-P-I-A-L. And if we look at this, K-U-N-P-I-A-L. And so the debug um, details is extremely helpful because we can say, yes, that is the correct account ID and uh, great. And then the result of this, I guess, is that we su successfully found the records and that was really the only you know, element there. So that's, so that's all that happened. But I like to debug early and I like to debug often. And it's really helpful to read through these debug logs to understand what the flow is doing and how it's performing along the way. So we know for a fact that our first get records is working and that's perfect.